UNCP lifts up women's empowerment as the month of March comes to a close. And the Student Government Association gears up for elections. Those stories plus, Katanji Brown Jackson picks up a key endorsement on her way to the U.S. Supreme Court. I'm Jay Locklear. And I'm Jay Coley. Welcome back to another episode of Carolina News Today. March is Women's History Month. It's an annual celebration highlighting the contributions of women to events in history. The celebration's roots can be traced back to the first International Women's Day in 1911. That day evolved into a week, and in 1987, Congress passed a law that designated March as Women's History Month. The month is now recognized around the world. Many offices and organizations at UNCP held events to acknowledge the accomplishments of not only women internationally, but here on campus. On Tuesday, Student Inclusion and Diversity collaborated with Community and Civic Engagement to host their annual Women's Panel, Saluting Excellence in Women's Leadership on Campus. It consisted of five women who all have made contributions to the university or the town of Pembroke. Each panelist spoke about the challenges they faced as women while trying to reach their goals. They offer advice to students on how to defy the odds, hoping that students are able to take that advice and apply it to their future. Panelists were even able to gather advice from each other. Robertson County Commissioner and business owner, Feline Dial said that each panelist introduced different concepts to get them to look at ideas from multiple perspectives. Dana was talking about um, being true to yourself, your authentic self. That's something that's very important. However, it just didn't, I didn't think of that, but she did. So, you know, everyone, um, can listen to a question and come up with a different concept or idea and um, and that rings true here and across the board, especially in leadership. An organization on campus decided to celebrate Women's History Month in a non-conventional way. Women of UNCP created an event that allowed men and women to go head to head on serious and lighthearted topics in a battle of the sexes. There wasn't an actual battle or a trophy, but both groups were able to debate various topics surrounding relationships, social media, and career goals. I was able to attend that event, which kept me on my toes. The organization Woman of UNCP hosted a Battle of the Sexes program on Thursday to allow student panelists to give their opinion about current topics on the college campus. This will be an annual event for the organization, which mirrors the actions of their founders at East Carolina University. COVID restrictions postponed their event last school year. WOMAN is an acronym for Woman Organization for Minorities Achieving Now, whose mission is to empower, enrich, and encourage all minority women. One important aspect of this program was to give the minority women of the organization a platform to freely speak their mind about current topics without feeling ashamed. Event moderator and volunteer coordinator for women, Elizabeth Hunt says that students were able to let their guard down and have fun. People were more open to being vulnerable and sharing actually how they felt because they didn't feel like anybody was going to target them or be like, you know, well what you said isn't right because this is how I feel. Everybody was pretty much open to different opinions. Comical videos were used to introduce discussion points that panelists would get to chime in on. After each video was shown, panelists were instructed to tap a buzzer in order to answer the question. Whoever tapped the buzzer first was allowed to give their opinion first. Students in the audience were also encouraged to ask and answer questions to foster group discussion. Jael Ross, woman president, says that all students in attendance were actively engaged because they had a connection with the topics. And people were really talking. Um, there were a lot of like issues that people really related to, so I think that they really enjoyed it. Woman looks forward to hosting the next Battle of the Sexes program for the 2022-2023 school year and encourages students to be on the lookout for other programs to come. I'm Jayla Coley reporting for Carolina News Today. Senator Joe Manchin all but ensures that Judge Ketanji Brown Jackson will be confirmed to the U.S. Supreme Court. On Friday, the Democrat from West Virginia released a statement saying he will support Jackson's nomination to the high court. Manchin said after meeting with Jackson and considering her record, he determined she is, quote, supremely qualified and has a disposition necessary to be a Supreme Court justice. If Senate Democrats vote unanimously in Jackson's favor, they can confirm Jackson without any Republican backing. If the vote is partisan and split 50-50, Vice President Kamala Harris would then cast a tie-breaking ballot. 
that would be two firsts for black women in two of the nation's highest offices. The Student Government Association at UNCP has not slowed down, even with spring break this month. Here's Aspen Anderson to tell us what's been going on. Hey Brave Nation, my name is Aspen Anderson and I'm the Student Affairs Chair for SGA, bringing you SGA's recap for the month of March. First up, we are coming off of a very successful SGA week with events such as Conquering Resilience, Art Night, and Trivia Bingo. Our Conquering Resilience event engaged students in open dialogue with a diverse panel of speakers from Campus Resources. For Art Night, the Student Affairs Committee partnered with the Art Club to showcase work from six students and offer free materials to paint and decorate signs and canvases. For our Trivia Bingo, students gathered to learn about our university's history and finished the evening off with our free play event in the Hawk's Nest. UNCP also hosted the Association of Student Governments this month, at which time student office holders from all 17 UNC system schools learned about our school, its history, and our student government. Current initiatives in SGA include our recently passed Mental Health Awareness Week Act, which aims to dedicate a week of activities to promoting mental health and connecting students with resources on campus. This year's Mental Health Awareness Week will take place April 25th to the 29th. Be on the lookout for more information as we hope to offer mental health first aid training that week and so much more. In current news, SGA applications have closed and we're excited to announce that we have received over 20 senator applications and two tickets for our presidential and vice presidential election. A debate has been scheduled for March 29th from 6 to 7 p.m. and is open to the student body. We strongly encourage you to attend before casting your vote for SGA president and vice president. Campaigning started March 21st and will conclude on April 1st, with voting taking place on Brave Connect between March 28th and April 4th. For more information on SGA, be sure to follow us on social media at UNCP underscore SGA and find the Student Government Association on Brave Connect to stay up to date on our events. As always, go Braves! The UNCP Career Center welcomes students to attend their annual JCPenney suit-up event in Fayetteville at the Cross Creek Mall on Sunday. Students and alumni had the opportunity to acquire professional clothing at reduced prices. CNT reporter Gethsemane Victoria tells us more. Students, faculty, staff, and alumni had a chance to snag a good deal at the annual JCPenney suit-up event this past weekend. The event featured a DJ, networking cafe, and styling assistance, among other opportunities. That's a partnership between the UNCP Career Center as well as JCPenney, and it's an opportunity for the students to come here to the Cross Creek Mall and get up to 60% off of professional wear. So this is an event where we have the students come and they get to learn more about professional dress, they get to network with employers, as well as expanding their professional network, attendees were able to participate in raffles. This particular year offered $2,700 in giveaways, which was distributed through JCPenney gift cards and professional attire scholarships, among other prizes. I think this is great. Um, and I saw a bus uh, that actually got students from campus uh, to get them here, which is a great resource that, you know, I mean, it never really had it when I was a student about uh, eight years ago. So it was actually exciting to see uh, that happening uh, for students uh, around uh, the community, yeah. I think the, I think the event is great. It's a great way. There's like some people out here that can help you with networking and um, they have like, some opportunities for students. I think it, and I think this is a great chance to get some good clothing. Um, so professional clothing for whenever you have an actual job and everything, yeah. The event was an overall success, with many attendees lining up at the register before closing time. They live smiling and eager to attend future UNCP events. For Carolina News Today, I'm Gethsemane Victoria. People from the university and the town of Pembroke came out for the last installment of the Distinguished Speaker series, which featured a native author talking about her intriguing book. CNT associate producer Josh Baker has the story. An excited crowd fills the new Upchurch Auditorium as UNCP wraps up its Distinguished Speaker series. The university welcomed author Angeline Bully, author of New York Times bestseller The Firekeeper's Daughter, to speak about her personal journey as an indigenous woman and how she channeled that into her novel. I'm so, so I can climb into the back. Granny June sits in the passenger seat, headscarf tied under her chin. The novel is a young adult thriller that focuses on themes of trauma, drugs, and crime in the Native communities. The movie rights have recently been acquired by Higher Ground Media, a production company owned by the Obamas. 
Many members of the local Lumbee tribe turned out to see Bully and show their support. I always thought that we had a story that we could tell. And this felt, as I've been reading some documentaries, but it was a nice breath of fresh air to read something like this that's up to date and things that happen in a lot of tribes. I thought it was just awesome connection. I spoke with Bully about the feedback she's received from Native and Indigenous readers across the country. It's been a great experience being here and I love connecting with readers. And what amazes me is how people take so much from the story and they relate to so many things, even though it's very specific to my community. Um, I think that there is some um, universal themes that I touched on that really seem to resonate with a lot of people. Dry conditions in North Carolina spark weather advisories. And tornadoes in South Carolina force residents to seek shelter. A new TikTok trend causes injury at a Charlotte high school. We'll tell you about it when we come back. Hello, Brave Nation. We're in our third week of the month of giving, celebrating 135 years of black and gold. We want you to consider supporting your wonderful university. Log on to uncp.edu slash uncp135 for information about upcoming events and how you can support UNC Pembroke. Your gifts greatly impact the success of all students and enriches their college experience. Make your gift today at uncp.edu slash uncp135. Go Braves! The Giving Campaign gives an opportunity to be a part of UNC Pembroke's progression. In my honest opinion, it's all about paying it forward. The reward has been increased for information about the fatal shooting of a St. Paul's man last summer. Robertson County Sheriff Bernice Wilkins received $2,000 from a donor who wants to remain anonymous. This brings the total to $10,000 for information that could lead to the arrest of a suspect in the death of the 19-year-old Marquise Coleman. Coleman was a star football player who had signed with Fayetteville State University. He was shot at a trailer park on North Alfred Road on July 29th. The public can call Crime Stoppers at 910-865-TIPS. The homicide was the subject of an episode of the Crime Junkie podcast. The National Weather Service issued drought advisories in multiple North Carolina counties over the weekend, including Robinson and Scotland. Parts of the counties are experiencing abnormally dry or moderate drought conditions, according to the North Carolina Drought Management Advisory Council. Residents in Scotland County were urged not to burn yard waste or start other fires Saturday because of the wind and dry ground cover. Monday, Robinson County was put on watch, although county officials had lifted a burn ban on March 2nd. There's no rain in the forecast until Thursday. A tornado hit parts of South Carolina last week and left some picking up the pieces. Although the damage isn't widespread, it is severe, especially in Pickens County. Hanny McKenzie of WLOS talked to the couple who is lucky to be alive. Home insulation and siding stuck in the treetops as folks work to tarp damaged roofs in Pickens County. The National Weather Service confirming a tornado touched down here Wednesday night. Winds clocking 115 miles per hour, leaving behind damage consistent with an EF2 tornado about a quarter mile wide with a six mile long path. This home off Lost Valley Road now split in half. A woman inside had to be rescued by neighbors and a chainsaw. She's got a bunch of scratches. She's got bruises on her back, stuff like that, but she's fine. I mean, she's lucky. And at this house on Crystal Lane. It's just really loud roar and then we heard the roof being ripped. Allison Coleman, her husband, two children, and a friend taking shelter in their bathroom. Praise the Lord we're alive and we're not hurt. God is good. The family. She's purring. Newly reunited with their cat. Looks different out here, don't it? She's been missing since the storm. It's my baby. Volunteers with the American Red Cross out conducting damage assessments. We'll then be able to helpfully provide them with some financial assistance to help them on their recovery. That road to recovery could be a long one. It missed me by 100 yards. Bruce Harrington still without power, taking a ride to see how his neighbors fared. No warning, it just hit. After the fact, they sent me a text message. You got a tornado coming. Duh. 
Other residents also say they didn't get any tornado alerts until after it passed. The good news, Pickens County officials are reporting no fatalities or serious injuries. A new art exhibit on display at the Robinson Art Guild in Lumberton focuses on creative responses to COVID-19. CNT reporter Gethsemane Victoria checked it out. There is no doubt quarantine was a tough time for many, bringing an array of challenges, including exhaustion, depression, and anxiety. To combat this, the Robinson County Art Guild allowed local artists to come together and turn what couldn't quite be said in words into art. We wanted to see what the creativity was from COVID-19. And we're taking a positive view that is going to, it's going to have made us stronger and better able to produce even greater things. This idea generated the Time Out exhibition, which features works from Miss Nyla Chamberlain herself and a variety of other local artists, including Maggie Underwood and Lou Lewis. The unique art pieces center around different aspects of life during COVID-19, specifically quarantine. Wanted something that would make an artistic statement and not look like it had been thrown together as a temporary make-do. Ms. Nyla emphasized the importance art has on healing the soul and the ability to bring a community together. She hopes local residents take advantage of the many opportunities the Art Guild has to offer. Recognize all that they've been put through and be honest with themselves and patient with themselves as they learn to live again when we are back to normal if there is such a thing. The Time Out exhibition is ongoing until April 1st where everyone is welcome to check out the unique art pieces and are free to purchase some to help support local artists. For Carolina News Today, I'm Getsemane Victoria. Chris Rock will not be pressing charges against Will Smith following their onstage altercation at the Oscars Sunday night. That's according to the Los Angeles Police Department. Smith hit Rock in the face at the ceremony after the comedian made a joke about his wife, Jada. Rock joked about her hair by saying, quote, Jada, I love you. G.I. Jane, too. Can't wait to see you. Jada Pinkett Smith has been open about her struggle with alopecia, an autoimmune disorder that leads to hair loss. Shortly after hitting Rock in the face, Smith won the Best Actor Award for his role as tennis coach Richard Williams in the film King Richard. During Smith's emotional speech, he apologized to the Academy and his fellow nominees for this incident, but did not mention Rock at all. He later apologized to Rock on Instagram. There's a new warning for parents this week. It all surrounds a TikTok challenge where people are going around shooting others with air guns. Now we've learned the dangerous trend may have landed one Charlotte student in the hospital. That student's mom told WSOC's John Paul her daughter was hit with a Nerf gun. Yeah, that mother rushed here to Olympic High School yesterday after learning her daughter had been shot in the eye. She still have a blurry vision and the light bar, bar her eye still. Ana Rojas Alonzo is talking about her daughter, Andrea. The freshman was starting her day off at Olympic High School when she felt a sharp stinging in her eye. She'd been shot by a Nerf gun. He told me somebody shoot Andrea on her eye. And I was like, what happened? The mom had to take her to the hospital, then to a specialist to be checked out. Her eye was swelling. She had headaches. The plastic dart that she was hit with left her in pain. If it's not treated right, so um, the, um, it can damage the tissue of the eye. So it's something serious. But this is not isolated just to Olympic High School. There is a new TikTok challenge spreading online which is similar, where kids are shooting others with air guns. In this case, it was a Nerf, but it had a similar result. We know it's happened in some other states. Uh, these kids are using these Nerf guns that shoot this little, this little uh, um, rubber and uh, foam, little foam bullets. CMPD officer Claudio Jimenez says that in this case, the student who shot the Nerf gun could face criminal charges. He wonders if kids really know how serious this is. Don't be doing this stuff. This, this is stupid. This could have serious consequences. Some of them are very, very dangerous. Alonzo knows, and she wants to make sure the school takes this seriously, too. Because I don't want this to happen again, and I don't want this to happen to any other child. And we have asked CMS what kind of punishment that student could face for doing this. We've been told it's under investigation. NASA says astronaut Mark Van de Heij will return from the International Space Station later this month on a Russian Soyuz spacecraft as previously planned. 
On Monday, NASA, NASA set out to reinform, reaffirm that it's working closely with Russia's space agency, despite mounting geopolitical tensions. During Van de Heij's mission, which started last April, he broke the record for the longest single space flight by an American astronaut, which had stood at 340 days. He'll wrap up his space flight after 355 days in space, when he returns with two cosmonauts on March 30th. Braves bas baseball looks to sweep a weekend series on the road. And a UNCP track star gets a huge opportunity over the weekend. CNT Sports with Deshaun Donald is up next. Stay tuned. Welcome back. I'm Deshaun Donald. The Braves baseball team had a weekend series against Belmont Abbey. Friday night, the Crusaders erupted for 10 runs on 8 hits in the first 3 innings to field a 12-5 victory. But in Saturday's doubleheader, the Black and Gold combined for 26 hits with very lopsided victories to sweep the day. Christian Jane had a total of 7 runs and 5 RBIs. Gage Hammonds also had 6 RBIs. The Braves will play their next 9 games at home starting Wednesday when they'll suit up against a rematch against rival regional, regional rival Coker University at Sammy Cox Field. Softball hosted Erskine this weekend for a doubleheader during their Bark in the Park alumni weekend. In game one, bottom of the third, the Braves took a 5-0 lead thanks to Samantha Alvarez's hit that blasted the ball over the left center field fence. But Erskine loaded the bases and went on a streak to tie the game up 5-5 at the top of the seventh inning. Tatum Brumette hit a walk-off homer over the center field fence to end the game. Braves victory, 7-5. In the second game, the Braves started off hot, capping off a six-run inning and a couple of walk-offs. They finished the game 14-6, Braves victory. After the game, senior Emily Biddle talked about how important their offense was. Um, it definitely feels good to have our whole lineup hitting, and I feel like that's something as we came in as, um, you know, redshirt seniors, we were pulled to the side and coach like, you know, you guys don't have to take it all on this year. Our offense is going to pick you guys up. Your offense is going for you guys. So having one through nine hitting in the lineup and being able to throw some people in left and right, I mean, it really works for us. And just having a full offense that can hit and back up our pitchers and our defense is awesome. Friday, track star Joshua Skipskirt went up to NC State to compete in the Riley Relays, a Division I track meet. Chip Skirt competed against 132 other runners and placed 35th. He nearly broke a 40-year Pembroke record in a 10,000-meter run with a personal best of 29-25-44. Saturday, the track and field teams went to Mount Olive to compete in the Trojan Challenge. Both men and women picked up event titles in the 4x1 relay. Jeffrey Gunner picked up an event title in the 400-meter dash. Savannah Watkins finished the best mark in the long jump. The Braves will be back in action this weekend with two events, the Colonial Relays in Williamsonburg, Virginia, and the Bill Carson Invitational, hosted by ECU. While we were on spring break, a local sports hero was celebrated in a hometown ceremony. You may know him as a college football champion for the University of Georgia. CNT reporter Tashawn Carter tells us Zamir White was a standout from the beginning. Scotland County football star was recognized for his outstanding work on and off the football field. He was awarded with the keys to Lawrenburg, North Carolina. Zamir has always been known for his amazing football ability, starting with Scotland Parks and Rec and to Scotland County High School, then to National Championship with Georgia Bulldogs. Mayor Jim Willis spoke about Zamir's impact on the community. Football prowess, but what really is impressive about Zamir and what made us want to think about something like this honor is the man that he is and his character. And he really could, we could not pick a better ambassador for our community than this man in every way. And I think you saw in the presentation, people are just um, attracted to him, uh, particularly young people. And he's always got time. He was, you know, here he is, uh, very popular. Many people got up and spoke about Zamir's memories and shared how happy they are for him. Afterwards, we spoke with Zamir about hearing the thoughtful things from his peers. I'll say, i say like, um, for me, it's just a blessing. Um, just seeing um, my family, um, my community, um, just being here for me, and like just giving me like the key to the city. Like it's huge um, for me, my city. Yeah, for my family, definitely. So it, it's huge, and I'm happy. <laughs> That's me. For Carolina News today, I'm Tyshawn Carter. That's it for sports. Good luck to all Duke and Carolina fans this week. If it's even possible to wish luck for both sides. 
The men's basketball team will meet for the first time in a Final Four matchup. May the best team win, and I'll see you next week. Thanks, Deshaun. And thanks to our viewers. We know you missed us during our hiatus, but we're back and we've got plenty more episodes to come. I'm Jayla Coley. And I'm Jay Locklear. Don't forget to subscribe. See you next week.